What's going on, sports fans, and welcome to another episode of Insights from the Locker Room. I'm your host, Derek Bone Crusher Dennis, in the building with my co-host, Tyler Moose Johnstone. Thank you so much for tuning in again. We appreciate you guys following us on SoundCloud, subscribing on YouTube. Uh, that's what supports the podcast the most, so we really appreciate it. Um, and also, we're, for one more week, we're going to be doing our giveaway to Caffeine and Kilo, or for the Caffeine and Kilos coffee, rather. Uh, Caffeine Kilos, thank you for supporting the podcast. Uh, go check them out. They have great clothing for lifters. They're just an active lifestyle brand, and their coffee is ridiculous. Um, so go ahead and subscribe on YouTube, like on SoundCloud, and follow us on SoundCloud. And if you do those things, and follow us on Instagram, you do Instagram those. as well. You do those three things, you'll be entered to win a free bag of their coffee, uh, and we will announce the winners in our next episode. Um, so yeah, so today Derek brought a special guest. Today I did. I'll let him did. introduce him. I'll let I you did. introduce him. So today we have a very special guest, my family, my brother, Jamil Douglas, who is currently a member of the Tennessee Titans. Give it up for him, people. Yes, this is, we got an NFL player in the building for the first time on Insights from the Locker Room to give us all those great insights that you guys love to talk about. NFL players, what who is like, what is like. Jamil's probably been on about four or five teams now. Yeah, about four. So he's experienced a lot of teams, especially... He got a nice one of them big shiny things that NFL players get to walk around with on their finger. So, Jamil, please tell the people about, you know, where you're from, where you come from, your upbringing, and uh, let's start there. Yeah, uh, from Southern California. Um, I was born in Compton, California. We moved to Cypress, California, um, you know, when I was in elementary school. So, uh, grew up going to going to school there, um, went to Cypress High School, uh, you know, grew up playing basketball my whole life, pretty much until my junior year of high school, and that's when I got my first offer from, I believe it was San Diego State, hey. um, and then I switched over to just playing football completely, so, um, you know, got offered from Arizona State. Um, I was originally committed to Utah. Interesting. That was before they was in the Pac-12, though, so. I'll tell you what. To tra- to change from committing to Utah to, to Arizona, Arizona State, is a yeah. big jump. That is a one eighty, yeah, yeah, sir. Yeah. That's a big jump. Yeah, for that sure. That's a one eighty, especially because um, nobody knew they were going to be Pac twelve back exactly. then. Exactly. Nah. That's the thing, though. I wanted to play. I wanted to have a chance to play in front of the family and everything um, during the course of the season. So um, made the switch to Arizona State. Stuck with that. Committed there. And a year later, I think Utah jumped into the Pac twelve. So yep. It could have it could have worked out either. I mean, way. I guess you could look at it this way: you was destined to be in a Pac-12 to yeah, begin with, exactly. Yeah, either way, or you could yeah. look at it this way: you avoided going to goddamn Utah. Right? <laughs> that would have sucked. Yeah, What's wrong with Utah? Yeah. Utah had a pretty good program. Though. Well, okay, football wise, but outside of football, he would have been miserable mm-hmm. compared where, to. Where, where's Utah? At? So, is that Salt Lake City? Salt Lake City. I think Salt Lake City. Yeah. yeah. I think I drove through there one time, uh, and it looks just like a Coors Light can when you when you drive down the highway yeah, right through. Yeah. It looks like a Coors Light. You know how the Coors Light yeah. can got the mountain. Yep. It looks exactly like that, and you're driving through for at least an hour. That it stinks true. in that city, though, too. But anyway, so you picked Arizona State. How, how was your time there? Uh, it was good. I mean, uh, Coach Erickson was the, the coach that I committed to originally. Yep. Um, so I spent a year with him, and then that staff got, got fired, and they brought in Todd Graham. And uh, that was probably the best thing that probably happened to the guys that were able to stick in that program. Mm hmm. Just from a football standpoint of winning games and yeah. being able to play on national TV, that was probably the best thing that happened. So um started my sophomore, junior, senior season. Sophomore and junior season, played left guard. Senior season, uh, made the jump to left tackle uh, for a year. Yeah. So wait, did you, did you redshirt? I did. You did redshirt? Uh, yeah, okay. I redshirt. So you had a redshirt year, then freshman, then you started your redshirt sophomore year? Yep. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Started okay. at left guard uh, my redshirt sophomore year. But yeah, made the switch outside, played left tackle my senior year, which That's was fun. Yeah. You know what? I, I realized going in a senior year, like if you play left tackle senior year and they may think like, all right, this guy's not tall enough to be an NFL tackle, they always say, oh, you slide him inside, he's going to make a smooth transition. Like, because yeah. they figure undersized, but he's got the feet, he's got the hands, exactly. he's got the mobility. Yeah. So move him inside and he'll, he'll be good. So, so talk about your senior year. You played left tackle. Yeah. Uh, you uh, kind of did, did you have like NFL hype surrounding you before the season started, or did it kind of uh, come from your play during well, the season? You know, I had, my junior year, I, I made all conference. I was first team all conference, so 
you know, I, I knew in the back of my mind, like, hey, I'm going to have a shot, you know, depending on how well I played my senior year. Um, and, you know, just, you know, just from talking to my coach at the time, he's telling me, hey, you know, if you put together a good year, you're going to have a really good opportunity. So um, it wasn't something that I thought about, you know, all the time, but I was definitely like, I got to perform if I want this to happen. So um, there will be scouts, you know, coming around the spring practices or fall camp practices and whatnot. So you knew there was some type of buzz. But at the same time, we had, I mean, there was about four or five guys that were, you know, eligible to go to the NFL that year Yeah, that, that were pretty, you know, pretty high on the radar. So, um, like I said, when Coach Graham got there, that was probably the best thing to happen as far as, you know, putting us on the map and, yeah. and getting us the exposure to make it happen. For sure. And before we go uh, to, like, what it was like being recruited by NFL, um, you know, how that process was, I'm going to give myself a preemptive oh. off-topic fine. Off-topic fine, thank you. Yes. Oh, yes. so I'm, you're an O-line man. Yeah, yeah, I got to yeah, tell yeah. you, that's, that's we the, have O-line fines in the here. Fine bill. Yeah, the I, fine. I forgot yeah. to bring it out at yeah. the beginning of the episode, so yes. when I block the screen, I'm grabbing oh, the stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So this is what we got here for you. Gotcha. We have... Fan suggestion, by the way. Fan suggestion yes. to us. Todd, me and Tyler first was debating if we're going to put actual money in the jar. This is going to stand for money. Yeah. A fan okay. gave us the idea to use poker chips, and it was a great idea because poker chips are color-coded. Also, so who carries each, cash around anymore? Yeah, nobody carries cash. Everybody has plastic. But but I do have a, a little card swiper. We could have we could have kept it. Yeah, we, we could have. Yeah, it's all right. Anyway, 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 here it is. Anyway. <laughs> off topic, fine again. Off okay. topic, fine again. Yeah. Yeah. But, yes, the chips are color-coded to... Serve for whatever fine. So first fine we have self suck. The self suck. Yes. Second fine is under the, the bus. Under the bus. Yes. Throw somebody under the bus. Third fine is off topic. Off topic. Two of those. Fourth fine. Embarrassing the O line. Embarrassing the O line is a fourth fine. And the very last one is the black chip because it's the worst chip. Excuse fine. Excuse fine. Okay. Yes. Any excuses made about any stories? Any terms of uh, t- time playing, players played against, anything like that. Excuse fines are black car- black chips, and those will be thrown in. Those are probably the heaviest fines. And, the and pot- so far, this is what we estimate. <laughs> that's the pot right now. Fine. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. full pot. Yeah. Six episodes in, that's yeah, the pot my, my, right now. Maya and, and Old Town, or Old Town Scottsdale yeah, that's, in general are going to make a lot of money. This time. <laughs> that's what the fines are going to go to. It's going to go to an O-line night. So, yes. So, back to my question. Yeah. Uh, while we're still in college, so... This is why I said it. it's funny that you went from like Utah being such a conservative school, yeah. and then picking ASU, yeah. um, which the reason I didn't. Oh, I was a pick, party school, oh, wasn't yeah. it? That's the reason I went out of state for I college. Remember hearing I remember that I had in offers. high school. I heard ASU was the biggest party school in the nation. Yeah, because yeah, so, yeah, uh, Dennis Erickson uh, recruited me as well, mm-hmm. um, and and every they were all pissed off because I left. I went out of state for college, and the reason being, I knew I wouldn't. All my friends were going to be going to ASU for right, high school. Yeah, yeah, I knew it wasn't going to be a good situation yeah. for me because something like what sixty thousand people go to that school. Seventeen yeah, year old. 70, I swear, no, I swear to God that my, the reason I didn't go to U of A or ASU first and foremost, the, the number one reason that they weren't even on my radar was because it, I, I wouldn't have gotten it done. You wouldn't I, have made I, it. I would not wouldn't have made it. That's understandable. Um, because. ASU is split in half by Mill Avenue. And for those who don't know what Mill Avenue is, there are 35, uh, roughly 35 bars on Mill Ave. Yeah. And it is in, like, on campus. Um, it's a party school. It is. Um, so what was it like? What was the locker room atmosphere like? Like, do guys go out a lot on uh, your team? ASU, or? Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, especially if you're a red shirt. And I think. Oh, big time. Oh, red, red shirt year. You red go off. Get, yeah. Go down the train. Oh. Yeah, it was bad. I, <laughs> guys going out before you got to go lift and stuff. You oh, went, my you God. Yeah. Rolling into the and you made it happen. Honest, honest to God, I will say this. Yeah. The best practices I ever had in my freshman year, like my red shirt year, you had a, a bender was, all day. was on like four hours of sleep and I was hung oh, over. Yeah. <laughs> and like, and I think the reason was is because my mind just went to like survival mode. Yeah, yeah. And I just like kicked it into overdrive yeah. and like, you know, I, I sank the best to the left. Oh my God. The most energy. I was just zoned out yeah, and I was just sure. like, I need to get through this. And so like, since I was struggling, I was also pushing myself hard because I didn't want to look like I was hung over. Yeah. And those were my best practices. Yeah. That's always how it is. Literally. It's um, always how it is. But yeah, so, so red shirt year, you guys went out a lot? Yeah, red shirt year, we partied a lot. Uh, there, you know, there was a couple... 
main apartments that would throw all the parties oh, and yeah. whatnot. So you always travel around to those. Because they, they tore down Greek Row at ASU. Yeah. And what happened was all the fraternities and sororities bought out like entire co- apartment complexes. Exactly. Like mm. these small apartment complexes. Exactly. So That's now, so yeah, late. because now it was it's a dry campus. So yeah. they wouldn't have been able to drink in their in their uh, frat houses, sorority houses. Oh, yeah. But now they just own these entire apartments and they can just throw they ragers. Just throw, yeah. Juicy J performed at a Halloween party for Sigma Chi like 2013. Yeah, yeah. I heard about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah wild, wild time. Yeah, we had basement parties in North Philly. Yeah, same thing with... That's uh, the, that was the trap. I, no, I went to Eugene. college in the trap. <laughs> Eugene, you had three bars, Taylor's, Webfoot, and Max's, and you went to those bars in that order. You closed Max's because they, they sing uh, Sweet Caroline. Oh, okay. And those are the three bars. There's literally not like... I mean, there's a couple other like dives, but like that's yeah, it, dude. Yeah, there's not, yeah. nothing like here. So like was it was, was that like a distraction ever for a lot of guys? Like did a lot of guys uh, on your well, team like I, fall out? Yeah, of that? yeah, for sure. I think the guys that couldn't separate it didn't make it. Obviously, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. there, it wasn't it. It's not for everybody. You can't you can't come here and think you're gonna be able to go hard and then play football at a high level as well. Exactly. So, so and like some said, guys do. They're convinced. Yeah. yeah at some point in time, you gotta like. My sophomore year was the cutoff time. I was like, okay, if I'm gonna play football, I'm gonna really yeah. play. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So, um, it, I, I applaud the people that can do it though, because there are some that that can make it, but yeah. like, but then you got the guys that think they that think they're like it. those guys and they're just not. Yeah, exactly. You know yeah. the guys always like that. It's always the guys who are like eight, nine, ten year vets. So like now they're playing pro football. Oh yeah, it'd be the like the super vet oh, guys yeah. always come in every day. You come in at like six thirty. They're already in the steam room mm-hmm. sitting there. The yeah, because they out. drank like a six pack and half a bottle of <laughs> yeah. like Crown Apple the night before. Yeah, sure. You're just like, dude, <laughs> it's it's Tuesday. Yeah. Yo, I never understood that. When I was with the Bears, we had a, a DB. Uh, he, I don't know if he's he used to train here at Fisher. Kelvin Hayden. Okay, yeah, I haven't met him. Kelvin, yo, Kelvin used to be drunk every. Day. Like when I say every day, literally, I think the only time he didn't drink was the night the night before games. <laughs> the dude was That's lit. Crazy. He would be in the That's steam crazy. room every day. I, I would come in and like try to be the first dude in the building thing and like oh, I'm gonna try to get in, you know, I'm on P squad, I'm trying to make yeah. the right impression, trying Absolutely, to yep. crack the active roster. Yeah. Kelvin's already in the steam room sitting there chilling. What's up, young buck? <laughs> what are you doing in here already? Sobering up. <laughs> Sobering up, pretty Sobering much. Just getting us up ready to just get through the day to go do it again. Some yeah. guys have the mentality, though. Like uh, Johnny Manziel said himself in like this interview with uh, Kevin Hart. He posted on Instagram like when he first got to Montreal. That's why I saw it. And uh, Kevin, it was when Kevin Hart was in Montreal doing a show. Mm-hmm. And they were like in cold tubs or something like that. It was like cold tub talk. Oh, so the cold tub talk. Yeah. yeah, that's a good show. And... Uh, Kevin Hart was basically asking like Johnny about like why he was such a partier in college and you know and and through the Bears and he Johnny was like at the time I just felt like I was that guy that it was the reason I was good because I was raging and mm-hmm. I was balling mm-hmm. and it was part of like his entire persona and he like that's what made him confident was like the partying yeah yeah and like that, yeah because he's like I'm such a dog I can party and and ball yeah. and, and win he, like he win the Heisman and, routine pretty exactly much. yeah made it part of his routine that's what gave him like comp- that was part of the part or thing that gave him confidence which yeah. I don't understand but like trust him now. We'll talk about that later. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk my, about that later. We'll save Johnny Manziel for another day. All right, so I already find myself for that big off-topic fine. I just had to know what going to yeah. ASU was like as a football player because <laughs> I avoided I'm, I'm going to give myself one too. Hold on, because I need to know this. What was it like practicing in this goddamn heat? Oh, yeah, all, the, all you have is the bubble. That, that's the only reason I, I chose to come here. That was a big part in me coming here, that bubble. Oh, the bubble's it, needed. Yeah, for it, those that don't know, a bubble is basically like a, a – it's an indoor. It, it's like an indoor facility, yeah. but it's like almost like a uh, like emergency, like national emergency, like no, hurricane Katrina you, shelter. You like need you need a bubble up. here. Yeah. yeah, you need that. You need here. a bubble here because if you've never been to Phoenix, Arizona, or Scottsdale, Tempe, wherever you want to be in the be, summertime, in the all su- the time. I'm talking about 110 plus every day. Yeah, every day. You've been to Vegas. It's like it's like it's like Vegas with with a little bit of crack. And no and no top. more and no more wind. Plus no pads, wind like Vegas. And you wearing pads. And you wearing pads, pads and helmets. Yeah. Oh man. We had a good setup most of the time. Like we would do our first. We would do up to like our first run period outside. And then we would move inside yeah. for the rest of practice. So we did that in Miami. But you I guys got it. love because yeah. did you practice in the mornings? Yeah, yeah. So that's oh, so yeah. that's love. Yeah. In high school here, because I played high school football here at Hamilton High School in Chandler. No, sir. 
You do. You go right at the right when school gets out. It's uh-huh. the no way hottest part of the day. There's no way in high, high school absolutely. they had you practice. Absolutely, but there's the rules. hottest point in the day. There's rules though. You have to have a certain amount of water breaks. They're like mandatory, so you get a lot of water breaks, and the water breaks have to take place in the shade, and you have to have a certain amount of time allotted. And in the shade, they have ice buckets. So my hottest practice ever. It was 115 out. And it was a day after a monsoon, so it rained like crazy the uh, night before, ugh. and so it was humid, and the the heat index was like 126 that day. And uh, it's, like, unsafe to practice over, like, 120, but it's, like, all right, well, we have all yeah. this stuff to keep us cool. So, in the shade, when it gets that hot, they put ice they put ice buckets. And there's, like, ten ice buckets, and literally one player at a time goes up to each of these ice buckets, and they just dip their entire head in, and then you pull it out, throw your helmet on, you go back out. Yeah. And that, that no day, that, dude, every My single day. My son's not playing high school football. Not, did, not in Arizona. We, did, yeah, yeah, we had the sponges, though. You just you Oh, yeah. That's ice towels. Yeah, squeeze, yeah, yeah. squeeze a sponge on you. It was the hottest thing ever, and I remember going to my first fall camp at Oregon, and it was like 91 degrees one day, and everybody was like, <laughs> and you were happy. <laughs> can't do it. Yeah. I'm dying coaching, and I'm sitting over here like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you, know, you know nothing. You, know, you, know, you adopted the heat. I was raised in it. <laughs> anyway. I pulled the uh, bane. <laughs> pulled the bane on him. Uh, so, the time at ASU was hot, but you got to practice in the bubble, yeah. which was nice. Yeah. Um, so there senior, was some party that happened. completed. Senior partying. Is completed. Senior is completed. What was uh what was life leading up from transitioning from college to getting ready to go to the NFL? Like what was that process like? Uh, I mean, it was kind of. I don't want to say it was hectic because I don't think it was. It was hectic. It was just like, I just kind of went with the flow of things. Like you know, I knew that I had to go train. You know, listening to an agent, he's telling you, "Hey, you're gonna have to train. You're gonna have your combine." You know, I got invited to the Senior Bowl, so it was just like a bunch of steps that you had to do until the draft. Oh, so, so. you was doing the, the the quintessential like like this stroll. like the path. This is the path that you this want coming is, out of college. Exactly. Senior Bowl combine draft. pro pro day draft. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. I mean, I think I probably I, I chose to train out at IMG um, oh, in Florida in, in Sarasota. Yeah. Um, and I was probably, I heard the campus is really nice. It is. It's crazy. I if, heard if it's If you stupid. haven't seen it, you got to see it one day. If, you, if you're if you ever in Sarasota for whatever reason, you'll be there. But, <laughs> yeah, I heard I am just uh, ridiculous. <laughs> but, yeah, so I was probably there for two weeks and then headed to the Senior Bowl. Did the Senior Bowl. Uh, came back, trained. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. What, what was, was the Senior Bowl like? What was yeah. that like? The Senior Bowl is, is hectic. I'm yeah. not going to lie. That's, What's, like, the daily schedule like? So, outside of all the interviews that you'll have scheduled, um... You pretty much get up, you go practice. What time do you have to get up? It depends. Oh, okay. Some days some days it was, you know, you're up at 6 o'clock. Yeah. Some days you're up at 5.30. Mm-hmm. I think we were up there for three or four days. So um, th- it was early mornings and late nights, though, yeah. because just how it was set up, they made it that way. Yeah, so go through the schedule. So you, so you wake up, go You wake up, go practice. Um, you know, practice is like a game, pretty much. Everybody's yeah. out there. There's hunger games out there. So. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Because every um, practice, you have to make a statement. Exactly. It's not like, people think, you know, oh, it's a senior bowl game. It's like, yeah, those nah, awesome it's, it's, it's the practices. It's the practices. Because yeah. that's where you're getting evaluated. Yeah. 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 Which I, I kind of think is wrong. I, I think they should change it because I feel like the game is just as important. Because in practice, the, you're just doing drills the whole time. And yeah. Like, for instance, a one-on-one well, Those practices hold drill. a lot of weight. Yeah, they do. But I feel like the game does as well. Like, yeah. how, how do you perform in a game atmosphere? Because yeah. one-on-ones, the thing, I, the problem I have with one-on-ones is it's a, it's it's a, de- it's a defensive line. Exactly. Drill. Like, it, the defensive line has a huge advantage. They, they're not but, looking for anything no. else but what you're doing. Also, yeah. the rest of the offensive line doesn't move as they normally would, exactly. which makes holes way bigger. Exactly. Um, yeah. So it's kind of funny to me when uh, – that I mean, and I know scouts do, and yeah. there's there's good scouts out there, it. but like people put it's, weight on those one. It's so natural to put weight on the one on ones, yeah. and that's that's wrong. Yeah, I get it. I mean, if you can block someone in space, then you can do it. But I feel like the game is just as important. Um, so yeah, I did the senior bowl, came back, trained for the com- uh, the combine. Mm-hmm. The combine's just as hectic. The combine sucks. Yeah. I went to the combine too yeah. in uh, 2016. Yeah, it's it's stressful. You're up, like I said, early so mornings, early. late nights. You, you wake up at like on average, you wake up at five, and you're up until like right. on average 11:30. And and it's not because like you, you're staying up; it's you're getting interviewed. And, yeah. Like you're locked in for, yeah. you know what? What is that like? 18 hours mm-hmm. in and a day. You but it's only for two days, right? Isn't nah, it? Nah, it's like it's, three or it's four. About three days. Yeah. Three days. Yeah. Um, what are the interviews like? 
The I always hear like you know you always hear in the media those crazy stories about the are a trip. stupid questions getting asked or like questions, questions, questions that's like what was the craziest question you could remember I you got asked? I don't think I got asked any crazy questions. I, I think the question that stumped me the most was someone asked me and I can't remember what team it was, but they were like, you know, if we were if we had you on our team and we were to cut you, what would be the reason we cut you? And it's How just do you like, yeah, that? it's yeah, like, like why would I tell you the reason why you just because cut me? because that the quarterback so and I didn't get along yeah. and he told you to exactly, cut me? Exactly. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, like, so you get questions like that, but the, it depends on what team interviews you. You you can kind of guess how the interview is gonna go based yeah, on yeah. the team and who's in the room. So um, sure. okay, so combine's crazy. Combine's crazy. And then uh, what was draft day like? Uh, it was stressful, man. Um, what were you like projected? I was uh, projected mid round, so three to five was yeah. was the projection. And of course, I wanted to go three earlier would have been fine, you know, yeah. whatever. But the more first money, the money. first day, what is the first day? Uh, it's one and two, I think. One and one, no one, just one. Just is the first one. Day. Yeah. So then you go to the second day is two and three. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Right? Yep. Yeah. And then yeah. day three is and the rest. Day three four, is, five, and six. Yeah. Seven. seven. Is yeah. there seven? Yeah. Yeah. Seven. yeah. So four, five, six, seven. So you know, first day, I didn't. I don't even think I watched the first day. I think we went out and did something. Absolutely. Yeah, um, you have to distract you have to. Yeah, yeah, just distract yeah, you yourself. Have to. You don't want to have that hope that like maybe somebody right. goes first round because who knows? Because exactly. who knows? Exactly. But yeah, you don't want to have that hope. Yeah, you yeah. don't want that. You don't so want then that. second day, I'm like, okay, I'm not going to watch the second round, but I'm going to tune in for the third round. Yeah. Third round comes and goes. Obviously, you know, there's guys that you're like, oh man, he went. I didn't I go I know yet. I'm better than him. <laughs> yeah, like, so it gets frustrating. <laughs> yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So <laughs> that day comes and goes. I don't think I slept that night. Early in the morning, I think the I think the fourth round starts at like nine in the morning. Yeah, yeah. Early. yeah super early. So I'm up at like six thirty, just waiting for the draft to start. Go yep. over to my mom's house. Everyone's there once again, and we're just waiting, 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 and finally it gets to pick what one fourteen, and my phone rings. So and it was the Dolphins. Tight. Uh, yeah. What what, what what was what was the emotion when you answered the? It phone? was it was I I don't I I definitely cried I, I I definitely remember crying but I was more relieved than I was like that's happy. what it is yeah I'm I was happy more, the phone yeah right. I'm just like finally I can I can be done with it you know what I'm yeah, saying like yeah. I didn't I'm d- you're done wondering like where I'm gonna be yeah when my phone's gonna ring yeah. I'm done watching the draft so yeah. like when I saw it they they don't announce the pick until after you speak on the phone so my phone had rang before yeah. the pick was even up like two picks before my phone had rang so i was on the phone dealing with everything before or when everything happened on tv yeah so oh so you didn't even get to sit down and like watch no i didn't get no i didn't get to sit i was on the phone with them talking they have you do interviews yeah you know people from their uh like their media are coaching you on Hey, they're gonna ask you this, that, the third. Just answer. Yeah, you yeah. gotta pick your jersey number. That's wild. You gotta yeah. Tell all that me. day. Yeah, all that day over the phone. So. Oh, see, I, I never, I never understood what they was talking about. It was makes seem like they just speak to everybody. Yeah. Hey, hello, how yeah. you feeling? We're gonna draft you. Yeah. Yeah, they do like, that. And then they call you yeah. right back. And then they call you right. They back. They call you right back. Yeah. Yeah, and then mm-hmm. start getting working, bro. It's immediate. Yeah. I didn't get exactly. drafted, so I don't know. Yeah. Neither, right. neither did I. But uh, I think they gave me two days after the draft. Two or three days after the draft. To get out there, uh, they were like, "We're gonna fly you out in about two days." Yeah, it's so, quick. Yeah, there's no like, yeah. "Oh, I just got drafted. Let's like, go." There's, there's yeah. no time to let it soak yeah, in. Yeah, no, Enjoy it's it. like straight to it. Yep. So, yeah, you, you had a better draft day experience. Than I did. <laughs> Bro, I got teased. Like, I, I was, uh, I, I was projected undrafted, like by all the, the media stuff, because I had a terrible senior year. Yeah. Um, but I had like teams talking to my agent saying if they went O line, like four or five teams, if they went O line after the third round, they were gonna take me. And my phone rang like. Four times in day three, and each one was like, "Hey, uh, ne- no. next round, if if you don't go, if if uh, this running back goes, like we're gonna pick you." Running back didn't go, so they picked him. Yeah, like stuff like that. And yeah. then in the seventh round, I get a call, and it's like, "Hey, Tyler, this is Sean Payton, Saints." And I was like, and like everyone's like hugging each other because I was on speaker. Everyone's like hugging each other in like the living room and shit. Yeah. And then he was like. Oh, uh, so we don't have a pick for the seventh round, uh, um, but I just want you to know we really like you. We want you to like consider us for I undrafted, and I was just like, 
don't like thank you, but don't yeah, call me don't when call the it. draft is still going yeah, on. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. I thought that was it. Bro. I was like, at least I got drafted, right? Yeah, and then yeah. I went undrafted, and then like I had a couple teams to pick from, so that was nice. Yeah, yeah. But I did the same thing though. Like e- even though I didn't get drafted, and I, I thought I'd at least get drafted like seventh round, even though I didn't get drafted. Once I picked the Chargers, uh, and we got that all shaken out, and I decided the same thing. Broke yeah. down a little. Like I cried. I was yeah. like, oh god, more because it was over. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Oh, I worked so hard for this, and exactly. then you go on, but um. Yeah, so I think it's almost better if once you get to like the seventh round to go as a free agent because then you get the pick. Oh, yeah, exactly. You get the pick. You'd rather be a, you'd rather be a free agent than yeah. the seventh round. Yeah. yeah, I mean, the only difference that the draft really makes is just what signing bonus you get. That's yeah. at, at that point. At after that, that point, yeah. I think after about the first through the fifth round, like you're that's like, where the salary changes. Exactly, yeah. and then after that, it's pretty much close to minimum salary. But then, like the signing bonuses, like yeah. are a couple yeah. hundred thousand to mm-hmm. fifty thousand. Yeah, um, and then like undrafted signing bonus. It depends. Um, it depends. It depends on the team and what they value. It. Exactly. I know guys that signed my year came out, signed undrafted, and they were getting like twenty, twenty five k's undrafted. See, that's crazy. And I know guys who got like five. I know guys who yeah. got ten. Because most guys get like five to ten, and I'll, yeah. I'll do a self suck. <laughs> Because your boy, I don't know if it still stands, but at the time, it was the most that uh, Chargers ever put out for a signing bonus oh, for nice. a free agent. So, 15. Nice. Bro, that's, nice. Yeah. that's actually yeah. really so good. So, pretty nice. That's, that's actually really good. That's heavy um, for an undrafted free signing agent. Bonus. Yeah, yeah, so I, I was pretty juiced. Um, but, so you got you got drafted by the Dolphins. Drafted you were out there like the two Dolphins. days later. Yeah. Uh, what was that rookie season like for you? Uh, it was, oh man, there was a lot going on that year. Um who was the coach that year? It was Joe Philbin. Mm-hmm. Philbin was still a coach. That was his last year. Yeah, that was his last year. So, get get out there, go through OTAs, fall camp. Uh, they end up telling me I won the starting job uh, before the fourth preseason game. So, I probably played maybe 10 snaps in the, fourth, the last preseason game. They pulled me. And then I started the first, what, four games. Uh of that season, coaching staff gets fired. Damn. Um, when that happens, that's you know, the worst. Man, yeah, in, interim head coach fired. wants to switch up everything. So, of course. you know, regardless, he put me on the bench. I probably sat on the bench for maybe another five games or so, and then. Uh, Were you still dressing for games? Though? I was still dressing. That's nice. I was yeah. still dressing. And so for those who don't know, you, you, if you dress and don't play, you, you still get that, that full I mean, game the, check. The exactly. inactive check is is still not that bad. Yeah. But yeah, it does help to just dress. Even if you, I mean, of course, any any ball player wants to play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But as long as you dress, you still get the full check whether yeah, you play. Like, or if not. your practice squad, you're getting like after taxes. Practice you're getting, squad, you're like. Getting, you're getting shit, but yeah, I mean, you're technically, like six to, a week. to a regular yeah. person, you're getting good money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. You're getting good money if you, yeah. as long as you dress, you get your full, your full, uh, your full game check. So, right. so yeah. So you so, sat for like five games. Sat for like five games. Uh, then you know we had some injuries, shook up the O line. I'm back in, uh, starting at right guard. Our center goes down, so I had to make the switch to center. Um, that was my first time playing I was center. About to say. Yeah, first time playing center ever. Uh, was versus the New York Jets. Why do you think they picked you to play center other than, like, the left guard? Or there was, was there literally nobody there else? There was literally nobody else that could do it. Uh, How many times did you, like, snap the ball at that point? You didn't even, like, work on it I when you were never, training for combine, no, just in case? You never snapped the I ball had, before, I had never snapped before the, ball. the week started. That is insane. You yeah. never snapped the ball. No. Nah. Insane. And it happened mid-game, too, so... <laughs> Yeah, so like it was like second quarter. Oh, oh man, shit. it was like threw him right minutes. into the fire. Yeah, it was like two That's minutes. Insane. Get baptized by yeah. the flames, my son. Yeah. <laughs> snapping, snapping, yeah. and blocking That's real. is In the NFL? real. Yeah, it's and I, I don't even know if you want to call it what I did snapping because there was a couple of times that it just rolled. It, it just rolled on the ground. Back, yeah, it just yeah. rolled back. Bro, I, trust you never me, did it before. Yeah, I personally know centers, and I won't say names, but I personally know centers that were backup centers, and they came in the game, and they had. Almost 20, no, like say, 20 say snaps the na- behind. Say the yeah. Names. Yeah. I love him so much. Say the name. He's just such a good dude. Say it. He knows. Yeah, he so, so add to the fine yeah, fine. It was, it was, so one of my one of my be... really, really good friends, one of, my, one of my best friends from Oregon, it was Doug Brenner. And, oh, uh, yeah, under, we'll give it under the bus fine. Is he related, Doug, is, is I he lo- related to Sam Brenner? No, no, oh, no. Okay. Uh, Hey, Doug, I'm so sorry. Um, it's okay, Doug. There's, there's te- like a, it happens to the best of us. It does. We have our bad days. Yeah. This was a bad day. Uh, Alamo Bowl 2015, my last season with the Ducks. 
uh, he oh, man, there was like 17 snaps that went over the head of the quarterback oh, or behind, or some way behind it's the a quarterback. Terrible feeling. Hey, that's we, a, we had negative but that's 46 a hard yards situation yeah. to come into. No, you got, we had a negative game? negative 46 yards rushing in the second half. We were up 31 to nothing at halftime. Did you guys? We win? lost. Oh man. Oh no! All the right, biggest, yeah, yeah, the that's biggest bad. comeback in bowl game history. It tied it. Wow. Who'd y'all lose to? Uh, TCU. Wow. Yeah, and and because the second quarter, our center got hurt, um, and uh, Vernon went out with concussion. Vernon Adams went out with concussion, and our backup quarterback came in, Jeff Lockie, um, who Did also Lockie had used to be at Washington. No, Oregon. Was it the same? Oh no, Oregon. no, 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 no. Oregon. Oh, I thought it was. I thought no, 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 no Jeff Lockie. I'm thinking way before. Um, yeah. And then Doug Brenner went at center, and, and just dude, we could not get snaps together. And so you honestly, had a backup quarterback really, and a backup center. Yeah, but more more than both up. of them, like. After like four snaps that are giving you negative yards, as a head coach, I probably would have just went under center. Under Even that's dude, because yeah, like if you if you did the math, if we would have taken a knee every single snap the second quarter or the second half, we would have won, won the game. If yeah. we would have taken a knee every single but possession, would have been pissed that you. Was we going. lost so many yards <laughs> and ran like no time oh, off man. the clock, so it was terrible. Anyway, I know everybody else on the team was sick. Oh man, I feel, yeah, yeah. God, I feel so bad for talking about Doug. He's my, he's literally my best friend, but that's just facts. It's all right. He had a bad day. He had a bad day. It's all right. Um, But yeah, so you get so with that in mind, that and that was a center that has snapped the ball a bunch of times, and that can happen. Yeah. So to say that he went from guard to center and never snapped the ball mid game in the NFL is insane to me. Yeah, it happened. Yeah. Yeah, So you ended up starting two games after that, didn't you? Yeah, I started uh, versus the Colts at center. Yeah, the Colts and and the Patriots. Unbelievable. Um, There might have been one more. Oh, San Diego, the Chargers. Mm -hmm. So, that's insane. Yeah, what, I mean, what happened? That's, that's what happened a, after that? Did you go back to guard? Or? Rookie year. Man. Uh, no, nah, the, so the rest after that Jets game, our center came back. Um, we played San Diego that next week. I was at guard. He got hurt again. I moved to center. Had a better game. Um, I actually played all three inside positions in that game. That's insane. Yeah, that's yeah, tough. all, that's all tough. three. We that's had some. some hey, people problems. don't understand O line going from left side to right side yeah. is a very hard transition. It's a bitch. Because yeah. like I you read have to something that's like uh, wiping your butt with the opposite hand. Pretty it much. is. It is pretty much. Yeah, you don't. That's know. a great analogy. Yeah. <laughs> that's a great, great analogy. I, I think I've done that one time, and it was it was weird. Yeah. I, I, like did it was in, I did it in college, so like, but to me, like, I mean. Yeah, I'm going to toot my own horn. Fuck it. self so Yes. I'm a fucking athlete. I can do, I can do <laughs> stuff a lot of people, I feel like a lot of people can do. Uh, but I did it in college. Like, literally one game in college, I played I played four different positions. Mm-hmm. Like, series. Like, one series left tackle. Next series go to right tackle. Yeah. Next series go to left guard. Next series go to right guard. Jesus and I was like, Christ. what is the point of me doing this? I mean, I was doing it, but I was like... Damn, man, it must be nice to just have one position to just kind of stick to that. I think if I, was, if I was a coach, I think I would cross-train every guy that I have. You have to, If though. you're not a starter, I would cross-train every guy. To play everything. At least yeah. for an individual period of day. Yeah. Just so, like, it's not completely new. Exactly. Yeah. Well, that's, what, that's, that's smart. what most backups are made of in the NFL. Like, those are the guys that they feel like yeah. are, like, the, the Swiss Army guys. guys. Yeah. The Swiss Army And those guys. are normally the best guys because they can do more they than one job. Yeah. Those guys stay in the league for a long time. I, I think yeah. that's what's kind of helping me stick around is, you know, being versatile because of the first, couple, the first year or so, I couldn't play all three positions effectively. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think now, you know, I can I can go to right, left, or center and be comfortable and, you know, be, effect- be effective. Yeah. yeah. So you, you bounced around a little bit after the Dolphins. Um, you know, you had you had a few teams. What year? So 2014, this is going to be your fifth season coming up? Yeah, this will be my fifth season. All right. And, and you got signed, you, you got onto the Tennessee Titans practice squad this year, right? Yeah. Got yes. onto, What's it like being with the, the Titans? Um, I, 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 hold on, I, hold on, hold on. Wait, wait. Backtrack, yeah, backtrack, yeah, yeah, backtrack. Yeah, yeah. Before that, let's talk about the other teams before that. The, the, especially oh, yeah. the team where you got the nice, yeah, big, oh, uh, shiny yeah. super Man, hair. I skipped it. I skipped it. You about to skip the big a one. Huge talking <laughs> what? point there. Yeah. yeah Greatest skip. Super Bowl comeback in history. It's what, embarrassing the old line. Yeah, that's bar- uh, embarrassing yeah. the old okay. line. I'll, I'll take that Bring one. It up. Throw it in there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so after my se- during my second year, I think I got released about game three or four with Miami. Um... I wasn't on a team for about a week or two. New England called, wanted to work me out. Um, flew down or flew up to Boston, actually. Um, you know, worked out for them. They signed me right on the spot. 
And that year was the year that they went and played the Falcons in the Super Bowl. Yeah, the best comeback in Super yeah, Bowl history. Yeah, and it Pro- was one of the best Super Bowls in Super Bowl history. Yeah, that was a that was a hell of a unbelievable game. Yeah. Super Bowl to watch. Yeah. What was the experience like being in New England? Like, what was it yeah. like being around Tom? Yeah, being around. Everybody Bill. wants to know what's it like being around Tom and Bill. It, it, it's exactly what you see on, on TV. TV. Yeah, it's exact. I, I can't. What time? What time does uh, Tom show up to the building? He, oh, I, I I feel like he doesn't leave the building. That's crazy. Like when you come in, Bro, he's there. Is a he yeah. is. A when you come in, he's there, and then when you leave, he's there. So, you know, it's you can't really tell those two anything because yeah. you know they have a system that works and yeah. So you so you're on you're a practice squad. I was on practice squad. So you know, the 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 lower kind of the lower you on the totem pole, the more you kind of let guys come up to you to yeah, yeah, start, yeah. start conversation because yeah. like you don't want to like. Get attached to anybody because yeah. uh, you know practice squad. You, you're you're kind yeah, of you know, yeah, it's, yeah. Especially it's, a, week week it's a very it's a very sensitive position yeah. to be in, especially in New England. Especially yeah. in New England because yeah. they're always rotating yeah, us rotating in and out every day. Um, what was Tom like uh, to you? Did he ever did he ever like come, yeah. go out of his way well, to say what's well, up to the you? First or what's day, going on? The first day I was there, um, I was sitting in the cafeteria and you know he came he came in there he walked in there and he's like, hey man, I'm Tom, and you know I'm thinking like. I know who you I, are. Yeah. <laughs> Your wife's Giselle, <laughs> sir. Like, I know, we, who I know exactly are. who you are. I know but, who you are. But, but honestly, that's that's. I just gained a lot of respect for Tom. Not that I, he didn't already He's have. Always it, like that. He's because always like, like yo, that. like you, you are the most known you're new football to the team, player right now. If you're new to the team, the next yeah. day you're in the building. He's the first guy. The fact that, that he in, the fact that he introduces his name too. He's not just like, "What's up, man?" Yeah. and like waiting for your name because he he knows you know. Exactly. He, knows he knows that it. you know. You know who he is. Who he is. So like everybody knows who he is. So he's yeah. like, "I'm Tom." I don't know. That says a yeah, lot yeah, about his character. He's, you know, he introduces himself. I'm like, "Hey, I'm, I'm Jamil." You know, and and that was it. You know, there's not like yeah. You gotta respect. There's not. He's not a guy that's gonna come up and start a whole conversation. No, I mean he's no. got yeah. a game to worry about. Exactly. Like, but the he's fact got, that he started, came yeah. up to you and introduced yourself, it you know, and especially me being with the Dolphins, they had their opinion about him. You're in the same conference as this guy. They don't like him, so you hear yeah. all these things. You're beating the shit out of him yeah. every year. But yeah. then when you get there, you're like, oh, he's actually a good guy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He's not the guy that everyone portrays him to be. So. Mm-hmm. Um, He's cool. Yeah, I like Gronk too. Gronk people. was a yeah. Gronk was a good, who's your, nice. Who is your favorite in that locker room? Even if it was somebody that people wouldn't know, who's your favorite? Mm, I, I I just like I like Julian Edelman, man. Just yeah, just, Julian's cool. He's just how, He's how he fights. Yeah, he just he just scrappy. He's he reminds always, me a lot of Danny Woodhead. Yeah, yeah, just like small. <laughs> Small scrappy Danny was a, fighter. Danny was a cool guy too. Yeah. Dog. I like Danny. Yeah, yeah, and they're both of them are just like small, active, yeah. and just like. You gotta, Unrelenting you, yeah, white yeah. kids. You gotta, <laughs> you gotta respect those guys because they're you got to. they're playing positions and you know just being honest, they're playing positions that you don't normally see those type of guys. Playing. White guys, yeah. yeah you so, don't see white guys playing running back and wide receiver exactly. ever. Yeah, like, and, and having success and they're dogs at yeah. doing it. So and you know what's crazy? That's a super stigma in football, though. Everybody was down on white guys playing certain positions. And I don't know why. Like, When's the last white corner you've seen in the NFL? Yeah, you, well, you haven't seen a that, listen. The last white great white DB I ever seen in life was John Lynch. He was an animal. Savage. He was a dog. Savage. That's the thing, though. To it, the it, point it, where you didn't, if you just watched him play yeah. and you didn't know what he looked like, you had no clue John Lynch was. Nah. Winning. If a They're white, if there. a white guy can make it as a DB, sometimes he comes from other positions. Like a good, nah, a good some of them are not out there. Chris Conti's. They're out there. Eric Weddle. Eric Weddle's out there. Eric, Eric Weddle. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Eric yeah. I remember. I, I was going to uh, Scott Frost. My. Uh, O coordinator in uh, Oregon now he's head coach in Nebraska. Yeah, he was a quarterback in Nebraska, legendary quarterback there. Dude, he played special teams, but he played free safety in the league. <laughs> this dude, could, this dude could power clean like three fifty two ten times. Like it was ridiculous. Yeah, like, it, he was just because he was just this dog white dude. Yeah, yeah. And so like, I feel like, yeah, Julian Edelman, or Julian Edelman's Edelman. God, hey, you know it was a dog. You know it was a dog white dude too. Uh, old buddy played for the Saints, backup quarterback. Uh, Hill. Oh yeah, Hill. He's a savage. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. 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 But he's back. He's, a he's, back he's, he's. I mean, he's a utility guy. Yeah. He, he does but everything. He's still back. He's still a he, quarterback yeah, yeah, he, on on the yeah. depth chart. He's a quarterback. But yeah. But I. But think, he can play wide receiver. He can play Teddy, running back. And Teddy Bridgewater is the backup. Yeah. Teddy is the backup. Officially, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, for sure. So. So. Uh, all right. Cool. Ed, Edelman, though, I, I respect that. That's mm-hmm. he's the yeah. man. Um. So you guys went to the Super Bowl that year. What's it like? I know you're a practice squad, but like, what's it like? 
being a part of a Super Bowl experience. Uh, like, the, the week Super leading Bowl up. Week like, like it's, the game. It was in Houston like? that year? It was in Houston that year. Ooh, that's a, there's that's a lot of stuff that they have you do. It's a have a Super Bowl yeah, there. Yeah, it was a good time. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that they have you do as far as, like, you know, you go. We, we kept our same regimen as far as practice. Um, I, we even did, like, nine on seven, like, that Wednesday mm-hmm. before the Super Bowl. So, it was everything was normal. We had our pads on, everything. Did Belichick still do, like, conditioning after practice? Yes, yep. St- on Super, even, even Super, Super Bowl, Bowl week? week? Yeah, Super Bowl Ooh. Consistent. Yeah. Hey, that guy, hey. He's old school. He's, he's a, a dog. dog. He's yeah, a goat. Yeah, he he's is. not going to change. He's not, he, has a, he has a formula that works. So, um, you know, everything was the same as far as practice, but then... You know, after practice, you may have some some uh, engagements that you have to get into as far as, like, the team going to do a media thing. Yeah. Um, yeah what's media day like? It's, they it's, make it look so fun. It's a bunch. Yeah. It's, I mean, I've gotten to meet Garamo. Uh, what's the guy? Oh, from? the little the little guy from Late Night Show. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, from uh, Jimmy Kimmel. Jimmy Kimmel. Jimmy Thank Kimmel. you. Got it. Uh, uh, I got to meet him. I met... Um, What's He's the, hilarious. The Olympian, uh, the girl, uh, Simone Biles. Oh, Simone. Ooh, you got to meet Simone? Dope. Yeah, She's dope. Yeah. yeah um, How tall was she? She was probably... Like waist height for you? Every bit of four feet. <laughs> 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 every bit of four feet. So, uh, it was a lot going on, though. It was cool. Um, you know, being on practice squad, you're kind of just in the back, just checking things yeah. out. So And also, like, as a practice squad guy, or even if you were like... A barely making it roster guy, like you, you're kind of you're hanging in the back because you don't want to like act like yeah, you're you know, the you reason the team like is there. Time, exactly. Yeah, so I, I see where you're coming exactly. from. Yeah, so but, like I, you're still I, able to observe all of it. Exactly. I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not the type of guy that's gonna jump in front of everything. Ex- like, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Know, I know what the deal is. So, yeah. um, it was cool though, you know, just being able to experience it all, and then just being a part of the team, getting getting there, especially if you're on practice squad. In New England, yeah, because you, you prep, you prep the D, the yeah, D. yeah, yeah, and and then, and then being able to stay on practice squad in New England for yeah. that because every week there was new guys in my like how, how many how many on average a week do you think were in and out like oh, new man. guys a week that year yeah, at least was, two or three yeah that's crazy it, they were rolling in new guys every every week. Crazy. So that's how a lot of NFL teams are. They bring in guys who work out squad, every yeah. week. Yeah. I don't remember. I mean, I wasn't that tuned in. But my season with the Chargers, I don't remember the, the practice squad changing that drastically. Well, a lot of season. teams aren't like that. A lot of teams, no, lot yeah. of teams. Yeah. will get their guys, and then they they trust these guys, so they're going to stick with them through the season. Because if they need them, they're like, hey, we know this guy. Yeah. But yeah. New England, they're all about finding the right fit. If something's not working, yeah. something's not clicking, they're going to try to figure out what's going on. Yeah. So, so the yeah. game itself. Yeah, the game what itself. What was that shit like? Because I, I, oh. The was game, like watching it from the the game was wild because the energy the energy in, over on the other sideline was so crazy. That it oh, because what were you down at uh, halftime? It was 28-3. 28-3, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. So, you know, they were, they they you're seeing them making plays, and yeah. right before half, I think they had got a pick six and oh. scored. Yeah. Which reminds me, what was what was the locker room like at halftime? So you're down 28-3 yeah. on the Patriots. Yeah. What was going on in the locker room? And I hate to say it, but there was nothing going cool, on. Cool, calm, and calm. Yeah, there was nothing going on. They were on. like, hey, man, we're going to. It was a regular, hey, let's. Don't hate to say it. That's so interesting this, to me. Like, that's awesome. Yeah. That's so crazy. That's like, why, everybody's I, kept their head. Yeah. That's why that team always wins. God, there, Damn. Was, there was nothing out of the ordinary because, besides God, hey, let's get it together. We still got to have to Nobody play. freaking out, though. Nobody freaking out. Coaches Nobody going through there. Down. No, no, nothing. Like, like little, So, like, your vibe of the locker room was nobody that was playing ever felt like they were out of the game, no. even though they were down a no. record 28-3. to three. No, there was nothing. There was nothing. I was like, man, this is this is bad. Yeah. It you just, know it's real when, when you're not playing and you're like, I ain't worried about it. They're going to figure it out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, like, so as, as being a guy that was kind of removed from, like, the yeah. on-field play, yeah. what was your thoughts going in? Like, honest-to-God thoughts. You're not with the Patriots anymore. Honest-to-God thoughts going in the halftime. What do you think was going to be the outcome? This, this was my thing. I, I said, if anybody can do it, Tom can do it. it's 12. That's so true. If anybody if anybody can do this, it's 12. That was, that was all I was thinking. I didn't know how That's it was going to happen. 
But yeah. I was like, this is the only guy that can that do can it. that can make that type of comeback. That's God real, damn. though. Yeah, and so second Tom half, is, y'all Tom came out. Goat, just, he is the goat. You can't not honestly like. It goat. frustrates me when guys argue about like old play. I'm like the league I mean, was shittier back in the, the 70s. Days. See, it was football, a worse league. Yeah. See football. I'm go off topic, but yes, football is a, is a sport where it's very, I mean I feel like it's hard to pick one guy that you can say is yeah. This is the greatest. Yeah, player because of all it's time. not like basketball, basketball where you can different. affect the game. Yeah. Also, it's like who has a who has a quarterback. You, you brought this up to me on Twitter. Who has a quarterback coach relationship like Brady and Belichick? Right. Like that much of a streak, a, a, a coach that knows how to use a Brady Yo, guys, in the way that he does. Guys yeah. go an entire career and don't have a relationship like that with a coach. Oh, like yeah. For them to yeah. have that for this long yeah. Yeah. and to still do it, that's special. Yeah, it is. So you guys won, and what was the Super Bowl parade like? Oh, man. The parade was the parade was crazy. I, I, I can't remember how many people were out there, but... I mean, and it's cold. It's New yeah, England. it was cold. It was freezing. It was snowing. But I don't think I slept for probably three days after that game. Same. Just from, you know, all the things that we were going to do after the game. Um, the parade, people were throwing you liquor from the from the crowd onto the uh, parade boats and whatnot. That's fine. And you're just you're just chugging. Yeah, you and just, that's that's what's cool that's too, is fine. everyone's just like, Yep, the yeah. season's over and we won. Yeah. So like it oh, doesn't yeah. even matter yeah, at this point. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So um Tom was at the team party after the game with yeah, the rings on dancing amigos. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> it was it was a good time. I think Lil Wayne came. Uh, yeah, the the Super Bowl Yeah, tell me about the the, the, the party, Super Bowl party. The the actual ring ceremony. No, not the ceremony. Oh, the, oh, the party after the game. Yeah, the party after the game. It's kind of it's it's kind of chill uh, for the most part until like the artist gets there. Yeah. Then they have you, you know, go meet the artist and then they perform and whatnot. But for the most part, it's just like everyone's eating, drinking. People are telling you congratulations. There's a bunch of like vendors in there from like boosters you know just a yeah. bunch of high class people you're basically so, just yeah. tired from the week yeah. and the game and yeah. you're trying to like get a buzz going so exactly. you can turn up yeah, yeah exactly. that's what it sounds so, like and then a bunch of guys uh, a lot of guys don't even stay that long they end up going do their own thing okay. so yeah. um it was a good time though it was, it was a lot of fun yeah what was the what was the ring ceremony like the ring ceremony was fun uh i think it was gucci man was there Snoop was there. What? Uh, Tracy Morgan did like the, you know the, the actual presenting That's of the ring. That's and, elite. Yeah, so it was a good time. We had a good time there as well. So yeah, talk about that. Crazy. So now you bounce around a couple teams. Spent some time in Atlanta. Yeah. Uh, you spent you spent a, a week or so in Indy. Indy. Yeah. Now you're with the Titans. Yeah. Talk to us about like what what what's that locker room like? Uh, all the locker rooms that you've been around. What's the Titans locker room like? What's that O line like? Uh, I mean, the O line is great, man. That I think, um, you know, I didn't know anybody on the O line when I got there. A lot of times, I, I go somewhere and I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, I, yeah. I've come in contact with these people before, but I didn't know anyone coming in there. So, you know, they, you know, every, as with every O line, I think you kind of fill guys out a little bit, see what what guys are feeling like, how this guy plays. And whatnot, and you know that like I'm cool with everyone on the O line now. So um, the locker room is a lot like New England, though, just because of you know the branch of the coaching staff. And yeah, you yeah. Have Rabel, who's, Rabel, who was a New England guy, so um, it's a lot like a New England feel, but I feel like it's more um, a little more laid back. Yeah, I don't want to say laid back, but like more player like oriented. Just because mm. yeah, okay, he played, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, yeah. so he gets it. He he knows what's going on. Blah, yeah. Blah, blah. So, um, what do you think of uh, what do you think of my boy Marcus? Mar- Marcus is cool, man. I, I he he doesn't talk much, but nah, he's, he's but he's a, he's a good dude. Like yeah, you know, he's like a, he's one of those guys. It's like people are like yo, Marcus Mario like. The, the media always portrays him as, like, this guy that can, like, not hurt a fly. And yeah. he's just the nicest guy ever. Like, is that is that true? And you're just like, yeah, that's pretty much as advertised. Like, that's... Yeah, yeah. That's, that is how he that's is. Him, yeah. yeah. He's yeah. the nicest dude but of all like time. But, like, at O-line dinners... He's like, from Hawaii. That's how yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's the O-line low. dinners, he's there. He's chilling. He, like, you just... That's big, though. He comes to O-line yeah. dinners. Yeah, he's yeah, he's a big. good dude. Yeah, I, yeah. I, and, like, there's nothing that you can really say about Marcus that you're like, oh, yeah... This I don't like this. You know what I'm saying? He's just yeah. He's just a solid guy and yeah. yeah. Like I said, 
Most people from Hawaii are like that. Like, yeah, that's very true. Yeah, yeah. very down to play with a lot of Hawaiians on, at Oregon. Yeah, uh, and yeah, all of them. Give very some down to yeah, some, yeah. some vibes. Oh yeah, oh yeah. We had, I had a couple Kava nights. Kava's yeah. ca- fire. Yeah. <laughs> Drink it up. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So, uh, what about Taylor Lewan? How do you like him? Taylor's cool, man. He's he is as advertised. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. What what you see is what you get. Yep. I like the fact that he doesn't change for anybody. Like. Cause he he's a he's a product of Chaparral High School out here in Arizona. Oh, yeah, yeah, I was uh, right. I was he's from Arizona. Oh. Yeah, I, I I've said this Derek a hundred times when I was coming out because I think I'm like two or three years younger than Taylor. Yeah. Uh, when I was coming out of high school, every single article, everything like they couldn't say my name without Same saying Taylor. that he they remind he reminds us a lot like Taylor Lewan. So oh, I always okay. paid attention yeah, yeah, to Taylor. Yeah, yeah. Like Taylor was a dog here. Yeah, I t- I talked to Taylor about Arizona State all the time. Uh, I was like, man, why didn't you just why didn't you just make that jump? And Probably the same reason I did, bro. Yeah, like, like honestly, like we even kind of look up. Like Marcus told me the second he got there, he's like, dude, like Taylor reminds me exactly like you. Yeah, yeah. I was, For like, sure, I was yeah. like, that's that's. Oh God, shit. you're you're a big Taylor Lewan fan. Oh Taylor Lewan. Well, <laughs> Taylor. Hey, I'll say this: Taylor Lewan is doing what Tyler Johnstone could have done if he never <laughs> tore his ACL twice. <laughs> so, so. Excuse fine. Excuse me. I'll do uh, two excuse fives. Yeah, that's, that's, that's <laughs> self suck. <laughs> and a self suck. Two and one. <laughs> oh, oh my man. god. Yeah. Uh, no, yeah. But I, I, so I always followed Taylor, like just to see what he was up to, yeah. and, and now he's what? The, uh, he's the highest paid O line in NFL history. NFL the history. highest paid offensive line. He deserves it, man. That guy is. That guy's the truth. I, I can't even I can't even front. That guy's the truth. Yo, what did he say to Josh Norman when they got into that? Oh yeah, I don't, I don't know. He I, never said to like go. This is what I said nah, to him. Nah, I think he, he I think he uh, did to the media as far as you know he had some issue with him de- as what he did during the game, but he never made a big deal about it. Like, cause the, I remember seeing that story and like I just remember seeing Jano, cause I was with Jano when he was in Carolina. Yeah. And I never knew him to be that type of dude, like until he got like all that clout around his name, and and, yeah. and then he left like he to go had, to Washington. And got and the then bread. he had, then he had then to be the shit talker guy yeah. all the time. Yeah. Cause yep. he used to be the like coolest, quietest dude ever. Now yeah. he's like super, always talking trash. I'm gonna lock you up. Like I, I don't know that Josh Norman, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what happened. I don't know. He what was what throwing punches at him. Like I just I see Taylor and walking away. It, like and that's the thing. Ta- yeah. Taylor doesn't take me as like a drop in an end bomb guy just to piss a guy. Nah, he nah, definitely nah, does nah. not. I don't think he's, he has nothing to do. He's with that. too swaggy for yeah, that. Yeah, you know what I mean? He got, he got, he's got too much culture for that. Yeah, yeah. He definitely has a lot of culture. That that is one thing I will say about he's he's culture for sure. He's culture. He's a good dude. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, yeah. So, what's going on with this offseason, man? Like, is it looking like you're going to be back with the Titans? Yeah, or what's so going I, on? I re-signed back with the Titans uh, after the season was over, after the last game. Um, right now, I'm just training, man, getting ready, getting ready to head back to OTAs, trying yep. to get in great shape, do get another shot at it, make a crack at this roster, and do do my thing. Yeah. So, well, when you're out there, you guys just picked sure. up uh, my center from college, Ronald Sagrasu, one of my good oh, friends. Oh, did we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. just oh, picked okay. him up like uh, a few weeks ago. So, oh, nice. Tell him I say what's up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, you, you guys will get along too. He's yeah, super Yeah, I, I actually met him uh, this past season. I did a workout with the uh, Baltimore Ravens, and he yeah. was there. I think he signed with them. Yeah, he did for a little, uh, short period of time. Yeah, yeah. so um, he was he was a good dude though. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's a good pickup for you. We appreciate you coming on, my brother. Yeah, thank you all for having me, man. It was great conversations. Uh, I hope you guys uh, tune in and listen. Uh, And if you want to, you can shout out Instagram, Twitter. Yeah, yeah. Plug your Twitter, man. Plug your Instagram. My Instagram is at Jamil, just at J-A-M-I-L. Twitter, you can find me, at Jamil Douglas. Um, And that's pretty much the two things I use the most. Yeah, yeah. Follow, follow up, everyone. Yeah, Go give him a follow. Go follow the Su- journey. Super humble dude. Show him some love follow and support dude. for all the people in Canada who listen, all the people in the States who listen. Tune in. Show him some support. Uh, yeah, we're going to be paying close attention to you. Appreciate you coming on, my brother. Best yeah, of man. luck with everything. Good luck, man. Thank y'all for having me. Good luck for that roster. Absolutely, sure. bro. Yeah, take it easy. So, again, that was my brother, Jamel Douglas of the Tennessee Titans. Uh, played with a bunch of NFL teams, played at ASU, fourth round draft pick in Miami Dolphins. Uh, we appreciate him coming on and sharing the story with us. Uh, now we're going to get into some nitty gritty topics that's going on north of the border. Mm. The good old Canadian football, football league. league. Yes, the good old Canadian football league that so, we're a part of. Uh, so in that conversation, we, we brought up uh, 
Johnny Manzo when we were talking about, you know, got, you know. And, oh, and Johnny Foosball. Johnny Football. And, and I'm calling him Johnny Foosball. I ain't calling him football. <laughs> yeah, no so. Like that. We were saving it for after, uh, so we didn't have to, you know, go yeah. into the We didn't want to get too off topic. Mill. We didn't want to get too off topic. We're, we're running low on off topic chips. Yes, we are. Uh, but Johnny uh, was released from the CFL this past week. Johnny was banned from the CFL banned, this yeah, past week. I should say banned. Um, and, you know, watching the interviews and stuff like that, you know, uh, Cavis, my, my GM. I, you could tell it was something a little, a little, a little fishy going on around there. <laughs> no, so Cavis, so when he was asked about it, uh, Montreal's GM, my GM, um, I watched the interview. It was like a 12 minute interview, and he, he was saying, well, he can't say too much about what happened because it's confidential. No, he can't say too much. Um, they can't keep it real. Was, exactly. They can't keep it real, but it, it was. Uh, the CFL's decision, yeah. uh, not the team's, and it, and if it was up to the team, he wouldn't have released Johnny. Um, well, well, here's the that's thing. what he said. That's what he said. Here's the thing, because you know I got heirs to the streets always, baby, and I know seventy five thousand dollar bonus that was coming up to be due March first. Mm. It's a pretty hefty bonus in the CFL. It's big, and a lot of teams, especially when you got five quarterbacks on your roster. You don't really know who your starter is. You didn't anoint him the starter going into next season. You basically said it was an open competition between yeah. him, Antonio Pipkin, Vernon Adams, the, the, the French guy, Matt Schultz. It's, it's about 12 quarterbacks on Montreal's roster. But, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you got to pay a guy 75000 offseason bonus, and he's not your starter. It's a pretty hefty thing. So, I mean, me... Just reading in between the lines. I'm not a part of Montreal. And, and I'm not going to throw Tyler into too much because that is his current employer. I don't want him to get in too much trouble. But, God. <laughs> but like I said, it's a little, something a little fishy going on around there. I think they was trying to find a way to get out of 75K. I think they tried to trade Johnny. And couldn't find a body that wanted to trade for him. Probably said, well, what is, what's another way we could get out of give him the 75 without... You know, cutting him or, or cutting him and looking like crazies for yeah. giving up all these draft picks, first round, first rounders and two stuff. Years, for, two years of you basically rounders. bet the franchise on Johnny. Yeah, it was like I, I was the. They gave up the first round pick for me this year, and then it was uh, the next two. And then the next for two Johnny. for Johnny. Yeah, so we so, don't have a first round pick for so this pretty season, much, next season or the season after. Exactly. So you pretty much put up the franchise to get Johnny to come there. Thinking he was going to be the answer to everything, which I respect. Cave, I respect Cavis' comment on what he said. Uh, you know, because a reporter asked him, you know, is it embarrassing that you picked up uh, Johnny Manziel, um, and you know he had underwhelming numbers, and then now he's he's gone, and, and you gave up those uh, two draft picks for him, and, and you know, Cavis had I, I think a, a great response was, you know, we're in the business of winning games, and at and at that moment in time. Uh, we felt like that the was best the right move, move to win was games. to win games was to pick up Johnny Manziel. Well, that's Johnny just had the hype. He had the hype. He had the hype. And, 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 and then, but yeah. that's, see, see again, I think Johnny found out the hard lesson that CFL football is not as easy as people like, especially Americans like to think it is. It's such a different. game. It's a different game, and especially, it's not you, you an easy from, game to play. No, you go from a league with, uh, you know, you got four downs. It's a smaller mm-hmm. field. There's a lot more you can do play wise. Um, until you go to CFL and it's a passing league now and, and you have to remain in a pocket with an O-line that has been shifting around uh, positions and, and isn't a consistent O-line because of, you know, uh, excuse fine, <laughs> isn't a consistent O-line because yes, of please. injuries. Please uh, ding that bad boy Oh, uh, yeah, man, we had, we, had some, we only started the same O-line two games this year. Um, Listen, I tweeted this. I tweeted this last week, and they got a lot of love on Twitter from, from a, lot, a lot of the fans. But I said, I don't think Johnny had the right mindset when he came to Canada. I think Johnny kind of already had in his head that he was doing the CFL a favor mm. by coming up here and not looking at it as an opportunity for him to try to get become a better football player. It's a different game to try to entrench yourself in and learn and kind of just reclaim what you had in college. I don't think Johnny had that mindset. I think Johnny had the mindset of he's a dog, he's a baller, he can play anywhere, he can do anything. And CFL has always been known 
to humble a lot of guys who've spent yeah. time in the NFL or a lot of guys who are big time college athletes and they come up north and they think they just it's just gonna be a piece they of cake. Don't, they don't take it as seriously. They so don't take they it don't as serious. Game, yeah. I don't think he had the same mindset. And it's been and it's, it's possible, been, yeah, for sure. It's That's been good. documented by a lot of people that a lot of people have questioned his passion, love, his his work ethic in terms of football because uh, June Jones came out after he done touted Johnny as probably could be the best, greatest CFL player to ever play. Then he, then when they traded him, it was all of a sudden this. Well, I don't. I think he needs to start putting more time in the film room or putting more time in to to hone his craft. It was said about him when he got cut from Cleveland. Uh, Joe Thomas said, "I felt like Johnny just didn't do enough." As a franchise quarterback, to entrench himself to be a better player, mm-hmm. to 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 succeed, and I think Connor and Cavis's interview kind of said the same thing. He tried to probably just say it a little subtly, but it's a common theme. I think Johnny has just been such a good player. People have just been stroking the ego for so long. It's kind of hard to get out your own way sometimes when you get to a certain point, especially when you're a grown yeah. man. On the other side of things, on the, on like the player side of things too, you know, with Cade saying that it was the CFL decision, and you know, he, he breached CF, his CFL contract, um, which we don't know what that is. We, I mean, I don't John, know how he did it. We I don't do know, know what it is. It. Johnny had okay. it out in his contract. All he had to do was there were certain stipulations in his contract. He had to go to certain meetings. He had to. Do whatever, whatever, do whatever was, the CFL whatever was him. in his contract for yeah, him because he had to do something. again he had issues with domestic violence and the, or domestic abuse, yeah, and he had drug or alcohol related issues, yeah. which is why he wasn't in the NFL anymore. Yeah, exactly. With, of with course, the, the CFL because a lot of, a CFL gets also gets a lot of stuff from guys who are especially when it comes to domestic. Uh, uh, issues. Yeah, and it comes to anything that you're doing, what you touch and yeah. hitting, or I mean, whatever. So I don't in, know somewhere, like. somewhere in that contract with CFL, Johnny had something. Yeah, he, 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 he had, had to He had to do all these things in the contract. And honestly, from like a player side of things, I'm wondering. I think he did it on if, purpose. If, if yeah, like did he just not come up to those obligations? So, that but I think he that comes from him knowing that he wasn't going to succeed up here because it was a yeah. tougher game for him to possibly. Do than, but he than did he thought he did that because like he he had a tweet. I can't remember exactly what it said. It said something along the lines of, uh, "Not necessarily." Like it didn't. It, it, it sounded it like didn't. he was looking forward to playing. Exactly. In the yeah, yeah. He was basically saying that. Um, Thank you for my time in Canada. Uh, I'm look now. Like I'm looking for, uh, or I'm looking to go towards opportunities More in the U.S. In the sta- in the More US. opportunities in the states is what he said. And so it, he it he framed like the AF situation like it, yeah. In his tweet, he frames the situation like it was his decision. So as in, like he purposely again, didn't do things so that he would his contract know, and be barred. You know, guys always they always try to save face or try to, you know, not yeah. turn. You know, no athlete whenever something goes down is going to come out and go straight up. Hey, this is what it was. This is what happened. For real, no yeah. one never does that, especially not publicly. No one never does that. It's it's pretty much zip to nil that an athlete will ever come out and say. This is why it was done, or this is what happened, or they yeah. asked me to do this, or yeah. they asked me to not go to these meetings, exactly. and they couldn't let me out of my if contract. If you know it's confidential, it's like you're not, you're yeah. not trying to say exactly what you I did. mean, who knows? It could have been a whole big There's so many things theory. that could have been, yeah. They could have called him, like, listen. But honestly, from a player side of things, I, I think he saw an out in the contract. He just didn't have to live up to one of his obligations, and that gave him an opportunity to pursue other interests. I mean, it was an out. I mean, there's different storylines you could take to the story. Yeah. My personal opinion is... Johnny hit the wall, hit the wall pretty goddamn hard. He knew he wasn't going to be a good CFL quarterback because it's very hard to play in the CFL, especially when you got to throw to that wide side of the field. Mm. And Johnny's arm is just not – it's not built for it. He doesn't have a strong arm. It's not built for it. No. So I think he realized he he's wasn't – He's a gamer. It's just, it's, he's a gamer. It's not – but like his style of play but really it's, isn't it's, built it's, for the it's CFL. It's more built for the U.S. than he's it is not, for he's the not, Canadian exactly. game. Exactly. He's not just like a pocket – Wait no, and see, passer. No. No. Guys who succeed, in he's the, a he's a scramble, make it happen. Guy. Guys who succeed in the CFL are they may have certain other intangibles that may not click as to what they like to typically see in U.S. quarterbacks, but the one constant is at least for the top guys in the CFL, they all have very big arms and they can make long throws because mm-hmm. that is a very big field to play on. Yep. And when you got to throw a sideline pass. That's going to go an extra 10 to 15 yards that you may not be able to be equipped to get it to. It's a different story. Exactly. And I think Johnny just, I think he just realized he just couldn't couldn't hang. 
That's possible. I mean, maybe that was, that he, had out, he had out in his contract. Yeah, he, he realized he couldn't hang, and it was just and it, and also I think too, I, I think I think I think it was all it was all masterminded. I don't think it was just Johnny by himself. I think Cavus played a part in this. I Whoa, think played a part in this. That's cons- I think conspiracy. The CFL is- played a part. Yes, I don't know, I bro. Think, listen, no. the CFL is a very small league. If you yeah. think. You think that it ain't easy to go talk to guys or figure stuff out or tweak some things and make some make some things well, jiggle shiggle yeah, wiggle no, and wake? I agree. Hey, you're sadly mistaken. No, but right? listen, I agree. Same I way agree. they think before free agency tampering doesn't go on. No, no, no. In I, CFL, I feel you. No, I know. Yes. No, I know what you're saying. CFL, there's a there's a lot of tampering. There's a lot of things that can happen. You know, uh, I, it's been described to me as like a good old boy league that's getting less good old boy. Like as in like it's mafia never been type good, shit. My right, knowledge listen, never been a good old boy. No, league. I'm saying like mafia type stuff. Um, not like straight mafia, <laughs> but it's ran like that. Like you know, you can do some shady stuff in the CFL, but it's getting you less get and less so. It. But what I'm trying to say is, is when Johnny came up to the CFL to go play for Hamilton at that time, there was no, there was no AAF even in like really even in talks. The XFL wasn't coming back yet, and so like they wrote that contract to Johnny, basically telling him they have leverage. This is the only other developmental league that you can do that's not the NFL that can maybe save your career and get back in the NFL. So he signed a contract. You know, back in that atmosphere where it was literally NFL or CFL, no more playing football. Well, he did do the Spring League. I forgot Hoping about the Spring that, League. that would work. That didn't work out. Did, no, hell no. Because Spring League was supposed to it be was a terrible. quick, and play a couple terrible. games. You nope. know what I'm saying? No, nope. Spring League did He not. did the Spring League. Spring League, didn't spring work league out. helped a couple guys, I think, but not many. CFL was his last option. And then before he came up here, he was asking for great cup playing starting quarterback money before he came. So Johnny knew his name and the weight his name carried. Yeah. And he knew that me coming up to CFL, it's going to sell tickets. And it did exactly what it did. It brought some media attention to the CFL that it probably wouldn't have gotten the States because they just got a chance to go, oh, well, Johnny Football is playing in Hamilton. And media always Johnny is Football. concerned what, what Johnny Manziel yeah, is doing. with the big stars. ESP and American yeah. media especially. So it's yeah. like you get the American media on the CFL. Johnny was on, time. even when he wasn't in football, he was on TMZ yeah. regularly. So like that's really the only leverage Johnny had with the CFL and he knew that. that contract. And he was, knew that. Yeah. Was and that's why that he was asking attention. for big dollars. And even I said it before, when the first first time Johnny Manziel popped up in the news, I said, like, listen, this dude is putting, he's going to come up here talking about, oh, I need this type of money and you need to pay me like so-and-so. And I'm like, listen, bro, CFL is a very humbling game. If you come up here with the wrong <laughs> mentality, you will get exposed. Yeah. And a lot of people in the states don't realize that. They don't you see it all the time? Like on, I guarantee on your team too. Ricky Every Williams did team. it. Ricky Williams thought he was gonna be able. Oh, I can go to Canada. I can you smoke know. weed. Yeah, then got, I go trip. Yeah. I'm gonna go up there Just and still do all the stuff like, I was doing in the NFL. I don't, I don't have to work as hard as in the NFL because the NFL is yeah. a harder league. Ricky so, like, Williams they don't found out the same. quick. Oh, this is this is it's dudes, real. You see that a lot. Savages yeah. up here, like especially the younger players. You see that a lot. Like I think that's that's why I like watching the AAF because I mean that's off. Let me go off topic. I like watching the AAF because, hey, that's those guys are. You can tell that they're, they're hungry. They're hungry. They're so they're playing hungry. They're playing with the passion that football was intended to play. They're with. not playing like. They're trying All right, to reach like this, I just got to get through this and then chasing. I can go the next one. Yeah, they're they're really you dream chasing. You you know what dream chasing football looks like as opposed to guys who are just. Status quo, comfortable, because that's what the NFL is. NFL mostly is once those guys with those big checks. Everything's status quo. Everything yeah, it's, is it's like I don't really watch NBA they until playoffs. Work. Like same reason. Like yeah. no, nobody's like hungry to get back on D and block shots no, and like do crazy man, nobody's, shit. Nobody, they, they, nah. don't, they don't worry about that until it's time to really you know exactly. what I'm saying go win a championship or yeah. something. It's like oh okay that's guys we're, we're thirty and thirty. We when you got win the type of money games. that's involved with it, that's what yeah. happens. It's natural. Exactly. You're gonna give me ten, fifteen, twenty million dollars. Guaranteed shit. I'm going to kick my motherfucking shoes off, kick back. Yeah. And go, you know what? Like, trust me, I'm, I'm going to prepare because I still want to be great. But at the same time, like, I know my bag is secure. So I'm, I'm kind of chilling. Like, I don't want to hurt myself. <laughs> I got enough money now. I can make some shit shake. That's how it goes. Oh, man. But, like, I feel like at that point, it's like you're just trying. Now, like, you have the bag. You're just trying to secure your your, your legacy. Like, I don't. I would never want to be the player I think that's what makes that gets, like, $20 good. million. Dollars. It's still raw. Yeah, exactly. CFL still, still raw. raw. Because you don't have the players that have life, life-changing money. Hold on to money. the dream. Yep. 
Yes, you, don't, you don't have the life changing money in the CFL. That's no. kept, like guys are still gonna have to get a career after the CFL. The dream. Over. They want to still be able to put Absolutely. on a helmet and the show hunger, the pads. The hunger's there. They're, pro football. They're still trying to build their legacy. But now I'm still needs, trying to build my yeah, legacy. Exactly. But now that needs to change because now we're going to segue into the next topic. Yes. Because CFLPA general meetings have just taken Niagara place. Niagara Falls, Park. which means in the next week, I think March 11, March 12th. Time to sit down for the first round of CFL CBA negotiations, baby. Ooh, I wish that was on C-SPAN. It's time I, I, to I, sit I wish down. I could tune in because uh, you know the statements out of the opening statements, basically to the media out of Niagara Falls uh, from the CFLPA. We're pissed off. We're pissed off, but like for good reason. We are I mean, I mean off. It, it, we we are pissed off. As Me CFL and Tyler's players. going through it I'm right pissed. now. We're going through it. So like before when Eric, when Derek just got here. So what, real quick. Before I get off topic, because we're running out of green chips, I will not get off topic. What the statement was, was basically like, in short, in summary, yeah. was we're pissed off because we're not getting our money. That we're we not are. getting paid our offseason bonus, and a lot of guys, most, if not damn near 99%, everybody every, relies every, on those bonuses. Everybody but starting quarterbacks, basically, relies on the offseason bonus. To get them through so that they can train with a normal schedule. They can do the normal offseason. So we can things. put in the time that we need to put in exactly. to be top flight professional athletes. Yeah, so everybody's pissed off because guess what? What was the first thing that Derek Dennis and Tyler Johnstone talked about when he showed up to my house to record this podcast today? It was What's going on in your career life, man? Yes. Like, what are you doing? What job are you interviewing for so that yes. you can get some extra bread during it's, the off season? That's all me and Tyler talk about every that's day. It. As soon as we stop hitting record, all we're talking about is, hey, man, I got a job interview. Hey, man, I can, I can possibly get a job here. Hey, I'm trying to do this. Hey, well, well, what do you think? Of and how hard is it to get a job for just a couple, like a few months? For like, a few months. So, so No one's hiring anybody who says, hey, I need a job so I, I can survive and feed my family. Yeah, just need but a few I plan extra, on leaving in four months yeah, to go play pro football. I just need a few extra hundred bucks a week. But also, my schedule is super strict because I, need I have to work, work out, out as well, too. I have to work out at this time. I have to work out with my trainers. I have to go see my physical therapist. I got to go see my doctor to get my knee injected. You know, there's going to be a lot of time. Like, so basically, I have to build my own schedule. Probably can only work two bullshit, days a week. Shit. Yeah, it's bullshit. So, let and me thank t- you to my, do- to my CFLPA rep. Rob Maver yes. for putting it out there. Thank you, and, John and, and Bowman, we, as well. Yes, because listen, when the NHL he, he he put in a statement when the NHL had their lockout in 2012, 13. Yeah, their players yeah were 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 out in Vegas they, with like, stacks of bread, call, calling like, people hey, with money phones. I'm calling Floyd Mayweather. I'm good. Yeah, like they're fine because they don't. That need ain't money. us. Not nah, have you seen one CFL player at no. the clubs making it rain? You see dudes tweeting no. about. Tweeting about, oh, I, I'm over here securing my bag with my second job. Why is it that I'm a pro athlete and I have to worry about having a second fucking job? So let me tell you what my schedule was today. After training, before this podcast started, I sat at my computer. I read emails about applications I sent out. So I've, I've applied to be, uh, which I'll probably get back because Arizona, you don't have Ooh, to have much. I'm, I'm about to start substitute teaching. Yes. Um, I'm learning how to bartend on Thursday. That's two jobs. Um, so I can start bartending uh, that's sometimes two, that's, because that's two jobs because substitute teaching you pick your days and you get 150 bucks a day mm-hmm. or 100 bucks a day, uh-huh. whatever. So I could pick. So I could be like, okay, I could use a rest day Wednesday and I'll just work out an extra day on Saturday, or I could work out that afternoon. Um, I'm learning how to bartend because bartending you can make a lot of money only working like a shift or two a week, a lot of extra money. I don't need a lot of extra money, but I need something. So so just doing that, because I don't know if either of those are going to pan out, so i got to chase both. And then uh, now I'm connected with an old uh, Oregon offensive lineman. I'm I'm probably going to start training with him uh, and training high school players. Oh, yeah. Like, just to make some extra bread. So it's like I have three things in the pot right now. I'm not getting paid yet, but, like, I need one of those things to pan out. Yeah. So that I can can survive the offseason. And it's crazy because I'm – off season is not a time where you're stressed. I'm stressed, and so that the the the, the CFL. I wasn't stressed up until Nia. I paid rent for this past month. That's what I'm saying. Now I'm stressed. Stressed. Looking at because it's, it's also hard. It's like okay, and cool. I'm supposed to be a top tier player yeah. in the league. You and see, I'm stressed. You see, you see. So like, imagine what 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 rookies guys were getting rookie oh, rookie salaries going. Cha boy, rookie salary. Didn't yeah. he, I, I missed the first six games, first five games because I didn't get drafted until. Week hey, five, man. week six. It's real out here. It's real, and most it's of my mo- most of my money was in my bonuses, uh, and most of my bonus was playing time, and I got hurt in the first game, so I missed out on like twenty grand. So, 
Your boy yeah. is hurt, and uh, hey, hey. it's it, it's Listen. really if I had the off season bonus though, my off season bonus is something like fifteen or twenty grand Canadian, which is that would have easily got me through, and I would have been able Easy. to save. Yeah. So it's like I, I'm not even able straight. to save. Yeah, and I would have been able to save for, I don't even for my talk about my what child my bonus coming. Would have been, but fuck. Oh I'm god, dead. so it is frustrating. I'm so hurt. I, I, I'm I taking understand. daggers in the back, boy. So their statement, and, I got, and I got a kid to feed. That's what I'm saying. Like, I got a kid coming, and I'm like, man, I want to put, like, five grand in a college fund before he's even born so that by the time he's in college that it's paid for itself. Like, there's so many things I want to do that I can't right now because I don't have the money in my bank. Hey, man. It's, because they're withholding it until CBA is done. It's it's a lot harder for, for, for the guy. I mean, Tyler is a fake Canadian. He has a Canadian passport. But... For the guys who are, I mean, he, he's feeling what the American guys go through. Because I live in the U.S. I, in the I, US. Hear, I feel that conversion rate. I had I actually, um, Canadian player, I'm going to give him a shout out. I know he's been dying to get on the show. Eventually he will. I'll, give, I'll get you on here. But uh, my man, Jordan Reeves, played for the Saskatchewan yeah. Rough yeah, yeah, Riders. Jordan Reeves. Yes, listen. He moved to Charlotte because his, his girlfriend's a NASCAR racer, mm-hmm. and which is actually pretty dope. I think she was on reality TV and all that. And I understand probably he's... Yeah. You know, his girl's probably looking out for him, taking care of him. But, you know, as a man, it's hard to want to rely on your significant other to, you know what I'm saying, yeah. hold, hold shit up. Because as a man, you feel like you ain't you ain't getting it done. But because our careers, it's just, hey, it is what it is. It is what it is. And, and let me tell you why it's so jacked up that they're holding our money, all right? It's leverage. The because current if, CBA doesn't even expire until training camp. The is CBA to doesn't open. even exp- so so the money was promised according to the current CBA. The current CBA does not end until May fifteenth, as in they owe us that money and they're not paying for it. Let me tell you why they're not paying for it. The reason they're not paying they're for it is us. because they're trying to squeeze us. They know they know, they know 99, are 99% hurting. of their players are gonna need are to get hurting. offseason jobs. They're hurting. They're hurting. And so what's that gonna do in CBA negotiations? Well, our union is going to be way quicker to make a deal if they know that all of their friends, all of their teammates need that money to pay bills, to, to support their family. Well, damn. Okay, we'll settle for less because we don't, we can't afford to hold out because you're withholding our money. Nah, it's cool. You can't afford to hold out I'm because busy. they're withholding our money. God, I could go off all day about it. All day. All day. But listen, honestly... I'm I'm perfectly fine with with uh, I, I told this I talked to both my PA reps, and I told them, y'all better hold it down, because honestly, I don't want no BS. Because if we're gonna sign another BS deal, I'm about to email John Bowman as well, because that's our PA rep. That's one I of our know, PA reps. And I, I don't know how much longer I want to play in the CFL if we if we're gonna keep playing for the for, for for BS. And I'm not complaining. I don't want fans to get on me and go, oh, Derek Dennis is complaining. Spoiled. You're spoiled. Uh, you should just be happy. We're giving you a chance to play football. Listen, if you've ever played the game of football and you've done it for how long we've done it and at certain levels, when you get to this level, yeah, we love the game and we want to play, but it ain't about that no more. We feed our families off of this. Feed them. Feed our families. Set up their futures. Yes. Like I'm expecting a child. This in is June. our job. This is not a this no. is not a this is not a game. It's not just a game. We don't it's have just, this we, is our careers. We don't have jobs. six months off. The six months off with no quotes, pay. With no with, pay. With no pay. Those six months off, we can't physic if we want to play at the top of our game, we can't physically you can't afford work a job and train. physically afford to work a job. I, I worked in uh It doesn't go hand to hand. No, I I worked in car sales uh in that one season. I wasn't sure what was gonna go on. And I quit the day I fa- the day we decided on the CFL was the day I went to my boss and went, hey man, got to go train. I can't work here because like I cannot train with this schedule. No, no shot. I could not hold the job down no. and train. Could you imagine having to work seven, eight, nine, ten hour shifts, and after your shift, have to go to a gym and train for another two hours, go home, get your five, six, seven if you're lucky hours of sleep. To wake up the next morning and do it again and do that every day for six months, you tell me how you'd feel. See, that's the thing is after after an eight hour shift at the car dealership, if I if I did opening, your boy'd be exhausted. But I would go work out, and and I'd be like, okay, well I got a good workout. But you can't in, work out as hard as I you could because I couldn't sell out on the workout because I was exhausted. I did everything and you had I could. Save energy to get up the next day. I, I worked out till I was about to throw up. No, hard as but it get was up like sore working out. Till I was about to throw up after a nine-hour shift, eight-hour shift, 
running around the parking lot all day, working out until I was about to throw up was half as much as I could normally do if, until I was about to throw up if, if I have the day oh, off man. with workout. It, it, dude, it's, it doesn't make it, any sense. But I cannot wait. I'm going to send an email as soon as this podcast is over to John Bowman and say, bro. Hold it down. Hold it. Hold, hold it, it down. Don't let the season start until we get a good deal. First meetings is, is end, end of this week, March 11th, 12th. I don't know what day that is. What is that? Is that a Monday? Is that a Sunday? Monday? We'll see. I don't know. I can't. I don't, I don't know. know. What, what's, what's today's date? Let's look at today's date. Today is Monday, 11th March is, 4th. Yeah, yeah. So we go. 11th is the next Monday. Next Monday. First meeting. Y'all sitting there, listen to what Mr. Ambrosi has to say, especially coming in with all this international stuff that's going to have to be negotiated in the CBA about what roster spots is going to be allocated to these international players. You got all these guys coming from all types of countries to come to the CFL Combine in the next couple months. Where do they fit on the roster? Because uh, if you're going to count them as internationals, now you're taking away from the American pool. Well... The you're going to count them as nationals. Now you're taking away from the Canadian pool. Exactly. Well, that's the thing. Is, is Are we going to add extra roster spots? Maybe. Here, you're talking about up in the that. salary cap yeah, but from, he, from 54 to need 70? To, need to at least. 70 is not enough. Not enough. Got to get to 100. not enough. Got to get it to 100. 70 Canadian, especially with the way the Canadian economy is looking and how it's going to keep going. Seven. That dollar is not going to be that strong in the gonna next couple years. Going to have to get it to 100 in order to even compete. Got to get it to 100. But maybe what well, XFL maybe has funding. Playing. Like I said, I'm not trying to be a Debbie Downer. Nope. The XFL, they're talking about minimum 75k USD they and if you're for 5 years. If if you're if you're a player that that is a hot commodity, you can make 80, 90, 100k 150 USD. I've heard. 150 I've heard. 100,000 USD. USD is what? 130, 140 Canadian? And now that we're talking about this... Now, is, now you're talking about dipping into the top players in the Canadian pool. This is what I'm saying, though. Now that we're talking about it, maybe this is... Maybe the international program that Ambrosi's working on, maybe it, that's his answer to losing the American players. He's that is, he said it. He said it. He's that is his answer. Well... That your, is, league, your league is losing talent. If you're if, if other leagues are gonna come to it and you're gonna talk about growing, you gotta understand to find talent. So you think that a, a football player from Sweden, Denmark, Pakistan, I don't know where the hell you're looking for him from. I mean, trust France, me, there's gonna be a few that are good football players. One. There's gonna be a few. Yeah, but not now you gotta take into account do these leagues wanna enough. lose their top players? This is like a ninety nine point. Because their top players sell for them. So do you feel like giving up your top wide receiver, no. quarterback, running back, nope. so maybe I, old I know lineman to go to Canada, yeah. and you lose out on your revenue that you have at home. Oh, it's gonna be a this is gonna be an interesting season, boy. Let me tell you, this man. Is gonna be an interesting season. Hey, we're getting into that nitty gritty, baby. It's gonna be interesting to see what happens in the CBA. That's man. what Mexico. I hope we hold out. I Mexico hope we hold out. want to plot and go. Oh, well, we'll get more guys to come play in Mexico if we can send our top players to Canada. Mm-hmm. But again, where are these spots coming from? Because the roster is only forty six. And then you add practice roster, which is another Six, seven, seven, eight, nine, nine guys. Yeah. I mean, where are these spots coming from? I'm just trying to figure <laughs> it out. Well, that's our thoughts on the on the current. The, the idea, the the idea sounds high. wonderful, but where are these spots coming from? You gotta think. You, listen, you gotta t- listen. And I, and I know a lot of people always love the argument. All oh, CFL doesn't have the money. If you start adding international players to it, you better find some dollars somewhere. You better hope you can create some TV revenue from somewhere because if you want to start adding more bodies to it, when they go home to whatever country they're coming from, they want to make sure they're going home with something. They don't want to go home with nothing. Or they're not going to want to come over here anyway. Yeah, because, like, why why would I just waste my time uh, living internationally? Yeah, it was a great experience. I got to live internationally for six months. I'm making money at home already. And now I have to go home and just, like, make I'm making money at home already. Yeah, and I don't have to And I got a situation set up already. Why am I going to leave that for something that's less? It's going to be interesting, man. Well, thank you, everybody, so much. Uh, don't forget about uh, the Caffeine and Kilos Coffee giveaway, the yes. way you sign up. Last week for the giveaway, make sure you subscribe on YouTube. Yes. Make sure you follow on Instagram yep. at Insights from the Locker Room underscore. And you follow us on Twitter at Insights from capital LR. You do all those three things. You may get you and a bag SoundCloud. or two. Yes, don't sir. forget about subscribe SoundCloud. to SoundCloud as well. Yes, you I, three apologize. of those four things. I swear to God, we will send you. Yes, you will get a, a PR bag. blend 
of some of the best coffee you've ever had, yeah, it's great. courtesy of Caffeine and Kilos, who are a very gracious sponsor, not sponsor, but a very gracious supporter of our podcast. All right, y'all. Take it easy, everybody. We're out of here.